Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and welcome to a 30 for 30 Lightroom head-to-head -head raw edit. I've got Adam here right now, but if you want to play along at home, go to fronosphoto.com slash LR3030. Not only can you download this raw file that we're about to edit, but you can get a free trial of Lightroom so you can play along with us. Adam, you ready to get going? Let's do it. All right, let's see what we've got. All right, let's see this. Oh, I know this file. This is my picture. I'm glad they picked this one to edit. All right, so... Let's go way back. This is taken with a Nikon D3000. This was a little test that I did to try to shoot in low light situations to show people that you can push the limits of a basic, basic camera and get some fantastic results. Yes, I did have good piece of glass on there. You can see I used the 14 to 24. Uh, but what am I thinking right off the rip? This could be color. This could be black and white. I think they both could work. Um, let's just do this. Let's figure out what I'm gonna do here. I'm not going to go to presets. I'm not a fan of presets, personally. But I'm going to bump the contrast. Why not? Because that's what I do. I boomify. I can also go down here to the linear, to the, to the curves. You can do medium. You could also go to strong. I like to, to change my point curve. Um, but when you do that, you can see that you're losing out on some of this detail in here. And we may have to bring that back. So let's see. Do I want to be in medium? Oh, I like strong for this one. I like boomifying it. That's kind of my style. Let's see. Highlights. What do highlights do? You can see how highlights bring you back, but don't be the guy that does this to the highlights and you see all of this glowy McLoherson stuff here and look what happens to the window. Not gonna work right there. Boom. Back to zero. Get rid of that. But let me show you what we can do with the shadows. Do you see how the shadows just opened everything back up? I can pull the highlights back just a little bit to compensate for that. Then we also have if we want it colder, we can go blue. If we want it a little warmer, we can pull up the yellow there and boom. Look at that, right in the face. Looks good, right in the kissa. Clarity. Not too far on the clarity, because then you're going to look like that guy. I don't want to be that guy either. So just a little bit on the clarity. The clarity is going to, going to, it's like it, it makes it a little more crunchy. That's what you're looking at. There's a bunch of other things we could do here as well. Saturation and vibrance. If you want to pull back, you can pull back. I'm not a fan of muted colors, though this would look pretty good that way. And if I'm pumping it up just a little bit, that's my vibrance, that's my saturation. I like the way that Walt is looking in this photo. And I do have some lens flare here. There's really not much I can do to get rid of that. And now that I look at it, I'm not a fan of cropping, but let's just, uh, let's just go into the crop tool, maintain the original aspect ratio, and let's go in here and see if we can make this a better photo. Yeah, I cut off the apple slightly on there. So to make it even better, I'm going to come back down. If this was if I was to recompose, and we'll see if I like this or I don't. I also don't want to cut off all of that paper, but maybe it will work. Let's see. And I don't want to cut off his foot. Look, the same things with composition. The, the, thing, the reason I don't personally crop is because I don't want to second guess every single photo that I take, but for, for this edit right here, I'm going to do whatever. And don't forget, you can download this file and try it yourself to see what you would do to it. But let's go ahead and do that. And I think it makes it slightly better. I've got just a little bit of the, the laptop here. I did cut off a little bit of that paper, but not a super big deal. I don't really like it that much, though. I really don't like that crop. I'm not a big fan of cropping. I'm going to go up a little bit and I'll crop a little bit so I don't get rid of it. And then I'm going to leave it at that. So that's my color one. I'm going to create a quick snapshot and we'll just call it color because I want to go black and white. Now I'm moving through pretty quick. Maybe you guys will spend a little more time, but ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at the, look at the light on the face. Look how good that looks. I'm using the laptop in this picture to brighten up his face. Sweet. And I'm curious about D haze, by the way, seeing if that does anything in this photo to get rid of that smoke or not get rid of it, but to, to bring it out a little more. Because dehaze kind of acts as a, as a, like a shadow, or like an enhancer. Command Z to get rid of dehaze a little bit. And it's fine, not bad, not much needed. But one thing that you notice here between the color and the black and white is that you lose this, the, uh, the lens flare down here. So I'm gonna go back to black and white, go like this. Just tweak this a little bit more. I like the way that the face is looking. Got that going there. Just sliding in here a little bit. And check it out. In black and white, your, 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 uh, your highlights aren't as 
bad as when you were in color. So we got that. I may want to open up this a little bit. Just open it up just a little more on the floor. I'm going to save this as my snapshot for BW. Go back to the color, see if there's any last tweaks that I want to make. I think I may want to make it warmer. And then we'll move on and, and uh, get to seeing what Adam has done. So I'm going to call the day with these two. I know they're quicker. They're quick little edits, but you don't need to spend all day on it. I did a color. I did a black and white. That's what I did. You can do whatever you want. But now let's see what Adam does. All right. Oh, very cool. So with this image, I think that I will probably start with a color edit. Um, I like the way that the light of the screen is hitting his face. I like that it's backlit. But I also might do a secondary edit in black and white. So let me get started here. So the very first thing that I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to bring up the clarity, and that's going to boost my midtones. I just want to kind of see what that does, which will also sharpen the image a little bit and also kind of punch it up just a little bit as well. I'm also going to open up my shadows. And what I'm doing now is I'm holding down the Option key, and the Option key will show you where the areas are that um, are either darker or lighter. So you can see if I go down, you can see that you know, I'm closing down the shadows. If, you go, if I go up, I'm opening up the shadows. And I kind of like that as a reference. And I'm just going to open it up. And at the same time while I'm doing this, I'm also looking at my subject's face, because to me, that's really the star of this. Um, I want to be able to get a good skin tone as well without kind of like changing the image too much. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my highlights down. And I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to take the um, Option key, and I'm going to grab the slider. And I'm going to kind of close down those highlights. And I'm just going to keep going down a little bit. And it, it's kind of a, a, you know, a balance here, where it's like I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit. I might duck down the highlights. And I'm just going to get to a point where I feel like it's good. And it's really more visually satisfying to me. So whatever the numbers are that are on the sliders, like that's not necessarily what I go on. Um, let's see what happens if we just duck the contrast. I could duck the blacks down, but what I, what I feel it's going to do is it's going to make it too harsh. So I want to just maybe just bring the contrast up. That's going to be cool, like that. Yeah, I like that. It's pretty nice. And I feel like it's a little bit cool, so I'm just going to bump up the white balance. And I just selected it. I'm going to use the arrow key because I want to look at it while I'm doing it. I don't want to be sitting there looking at the slider. I want to actually look at the image while I'm popping it up there. And that looks pretty cool. And um, I also think I might give this a little bit of a crop. I'm going to hit the R key, get into the cropping tool. And let's bring that down there. Actually, let's see what happens if we just bring it in even more. All right, let's see what that looks like. Hit the R key again to get out of the cropping tool. That looks a little bit better, yeah. And I'm trying not to cut off his foot, obviously. Um, I also want to straighten it out just a hair. I'm just going to hit the angle and just use the arrow keys again. I'm just doing it by eye. And that looks pretty cool like that. And uh, I'm just going to add a little bit more clarity, see what happens here. No, it's too much. It gets a little artificial looking. Maybe just a touch of exposure. Oh, it went down. Let's get a little more on his face. And now I'm going to bring the highlights down. Close that down a little bit like that. And let's just see what happens when we pump up our white balance a bit more. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I might actually add a little bit of vignetting to this guy. So I'm going to pop down here, and I'm just going to add a little post crop vignetting. Because it's already doing it on its own, so I just want to emphasize that a little bit more. And then again, with the Option key for some of these other tools, you can see that it actually shows you where you're affecting the areas. So I'm going to do that from my midpoint. Roundness, bring that up a little bit like that, and then I'm going to feather it off so it's a little bit more natural looking. That's pretty cool. And I'm going to use the backslash key to see my before and after, and you can see that we really punched up that image. It looks really cool. So I'm going to do Command N, and that's going to give me a snapshot. I'm going to call this color. And now I'm going to go to black and white, because I think that a black and white edit is definitely in the mix here. And I'm going to hit the V key. That takes me into the black and white, or it changes the color module to black and white. You can see that right up here. And I'm going to just add a little bit more contrast, because I'm going to punch this up now that we're black and white. I still think we could just have a little hair more exposure, something like that. Maybe we'll just bring our blacks down a little bit. And again, you guys, I'm using the Option key. That's why it's showing me where the areas that I'm affecting are changing. Just bring a little bit more of my shadows like that. And 
Yeah, it still, it still needs a little bit more action here. So I'm just going to bring my highlights down just a hair more, a little more contrast. And let's see, let me just look at the before and after. And actually for the black and white, it might be cooler to go a little bigger with this one. So let's just pop this up in a little bit more, up to the window. You know what, I'm just going to change my angle just a little bit more. And I'm just going to recrop it one more time, maybe grab his foot, bring it up like that. All right, and I'm going to create a new sna snapshot for black and white. It was called B-dubs, and there it is. Those are my edits. All right, Adam, here's my edit. Okay, here Let's you go. Let's see yours. Oh, you did too? Yeah, hey, you did too as well. I did. Interesting crops, sir. Yeah, you too. I like your color. I actually, it's a little different than mine. Yeah, yours is much punchier, much more vibrant. Well, you know I tend to go punchy, and yours is more muted, which, which can work well for a, uh, a, a band shot like this. Why, why'd you do two different crops? Well, the thing is, is that on the black and white, I felt it was such a moody shot that I wanted to see more of the smoke and more of the drama from the window because I felt like it kind of reduced him a little bit. It was more austere. Whereas the color, I felt I wanted to draw in more just because it just felt more present as color. Mm -hmm. um, and I also kind of got rid of some of that foreground as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I wanted to make sure that I kept... The computer I was fine with getting rid of. Right. But I was okay with, you know, because the apple was cut off a little bit. But then I went with the, I wanted to make sure I didn't cut off the paper because you cut off the paper slightly. And, and I think the one on the right with the black and white, I think that you left not enough foot space. Okay. And on the one on the left, I don't think you left enough foot toe space on the right hand side, huh. personally. That's my personal opinion. That's okay. But the color, but the edits look pretty good. Yeah. Um, I was kind of surprised that with the black and white that you didn't boomify as much. You kind of left it a little bit more silvery. So I went to 100, didn't I? Really? Yeah, and strong. You can go over to the develop module and take a look. Let's see. You're at 69 contrast. What? Well, that's that's in. Uh, let's let me look at the uh, black and white. Yeah, you 100% percent contrast. Exactly. Interesting. Oh, but you bumped your shadows. That's I did. What it I was is. bringing back the feet a little bit, bringing nice. back the, the lower side just to bring it up. Yeah, I mean, we did a lot of the same kind of things because it, it actually required, even though it's kind of a very bright photo, it did require doing um, more exposure, brightening up the exposure. Did you did you bit. realize this was a D three thousand? I didn't even realize that. I didn't look at the the info way on it. just picking an old camera and an old file. But um, you know, interesting edit, Adam. Yeah, I like it. All like right, yours. All right, so guys, how this works? You can go download this raw file over at fronosphoto.com slash. LR3030. You can also download a free trial of Adobe Lightroom right there so that you can play with that DNG file and do whatever you want with it in terms of edits. Compare it to what I did, compare it to what Adam did, but have fun doing this. And that is where we'll end it. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya.